The business of operations management is difficult, particularly in large enterprises like banking, insurance, and other services companies with teams of hundreds and thousands around the globe. Now add in recent pandemic forcing the workplace to change forever. Managers and employees are under immense pressure to get work done, while also finding ways to balance performance and well-being. The complexity is building, and it can be difficult to find the answers. This podcast, AO On Air, partnered with ActiveOps, is designed to help identify areas that will help employees, managers, and senior leaders find solutions to the challenges within operations management. The future of work will take all departments, such as HR, IT, and ops, aligned along with a steady dose of innovation to succeed. We'll bring you topics, thought leadership, and simple plans to help lead your teams into the future of work. A hybrid work world that will learn from one another and truly act globally, breaking down the silos of older management models for new ways of working. Welcome to the journey. Now let's begin. Hello and welcome to AO On Air. My name is Michael Cups. You're watching a uh, podcast sponsored by ActiveOps. We're excited to have you here and we're really excited about our two new guests today. They are new employees of our tribe here at ActiveOps as As things would have it, we are growing quite rapidly, and we're excited about it. And it's always good to get in new perspectives, uh, new new backgrounds that come in and influence how we uh, direct our business, whether it be in the customer facing or the product side. So really excited to have Nick and Jeremy join us today. Nick and Jeremy, thank you so much. Why don't we start with maybe you give a brief introduction and a a little bit about your background just to provide context. Uh, Jeremy, why don't you give us a go? Yeah, absolutely. Michael, thanks for having me today. Really appreciate it and looking forward to this conversation. I uh, I am currently the head of technology and business services practice here at ActiveOps. My background has always been in technology sales. Uh, started out my career selling to the small business market, moved around to the mid market, had some leadership roles as well. And the last few years have been focused really on enterprise size accounts. So typically your Fortune 500s, uh, you know, your billion dollars in revenue and above, 10,000 employees and above. So um, it's been quite an inter- interesting journey. I have spent most of my time in the workforce management and human capital management space when it comes to technology. So I'm excited to be here because the solution that we provide here at ActiveOps um, is very closely related to some of the solutions that I've been able to help other businesses implement as well. Excellent. And welcome, Jeremy. And you're based in San Diego, I believe. I am. I'm based in San Diego, California. Excellent. Excellent. Let's go to you, Nick. I think you're in Colorado, uh, Fort Collins to be precise. So uh, how about yourself? What's your background look like? Yes, my background is a little bit different. I kind of migrated into the sales realm. So I'm the head of solutions engineering here for ActiveOps, and I come from a previous uh, role in a similar capacity at a different software company. But I started in support and worked my way up through into sales and solutions engineering. Uh, the software company that I worked for previously focused on data and business intelligence, you know, dashboards, reporting, analytics, all of that uh, that good stuff. And I spent a while there building up solutions teams and expanding prior to coming over to ActiveOps. So this is definitely a different market for me, but technology and software does have some similarities in terms of process and how people like to interact with it. So that's what I'm that's what i happy to bring over here to ActiveOps. Excellent. Well, welcome, Nick. Let's stay with you for a minute, and then we'll get to you, Jeremy, on the first question. What I'm really curious about is you, you, you interviewed with us, you had expectations coming in, and then you got here and you started talking to customers, prospects, product people, other employees. Nick, I mean, what, is there anything that surprised you about ActiveOps, either culturally or technology-wise, that you want to share? I think uh, culturally it's really comfortable, so I don't want to speak too much to it. I was happy to come in and just feel so welcomed by everybody. And even though we have a disparate company across different you know, continents, there's still so much uh, interdepartment communication, which was a rarity for me, but that's very act- active off specific. As far as the solutions themselves, I think I was surprised by the volume of interest and just how accessible uh, what we're offering is to the market. I think a lot of that has to do with just post and pre and during pandemic transitions in terms of workforce. So I was uh, surprised when I first talked at ActiveOps about how relevant the applications were. And I think I've been even more surprised since being here and talking to people just to see how quickly it uh, impacts their businesses and how quickly it helps. Excellent. Excellent. And Jeremy, with an HCM background and and workforce management background, uh, any surprises for you? I know you've been here a little bit longer, about six months, but uh, any other observations there? 
Yeah, for me, I mean, we're an interesting time, right? I mean, this workforce environment is changing rapidly. Um, I mean, almost daily, we're hearing something new in terms of whether or not we're going to be in the office or if we're going to be fully remote. And a lot of companies have really adapted to these changes fairly quick. But I'd say what was surprising to me is, you know, when I came on board, it was what we we eventually came to what we now call the great resignation, right? Or, or the great reshuffle. You know, we've had millions of people quit their jobs. And so I'd say one of the things that was a surprise to me is coming on board, having our solution really focused on increasing productivity within operations and back office operations and so forth. And uh, lately I've seen the conversation change much to how do we, you know, maintain work-life balance with our employees? How do we better engage with our employees and how do we better retain our employees and customers? So um, I'd say that's the biggest surprise to me is just really the the change in outlook and, and conversations I've been having even since I started here. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because as we were in coming to the close of 21, it felt like we were kind of getting back to normal and then the Omicron hit and and we, uh, you know, went backwards or sideways or whatever the case is. But the interesting thing about that is the uncertainty continues. But businesses have to get back to business, and they and they've been doing it. But they they really, I think, in 22, they're looking at at the right way to manage a hybrid workforce and the right way to manage in a in a potential next pandemic wave. And so that's that's an interesting thing, you know, when you think about that uncertainty becoming injecting a little certainty in that for for business operations. Maybe maybe Jeremy, you can give us a start with you know you deal with big companies, so scalability, security. All of those things are important, but what do you, what do you think the top priorities in workforce management for those big companies are that you that you talk to on a daily basis? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, I think it's it's fairly well known that security is a very high priority when it comes to implementing technology within an organization. Um, scalability, of course. I mean, everybody wants to be able to have a solution that can go across. The entire organization right we like to have kind of that one-stop shop in a sense when it comes to um the solutions we're using but as far as you know the the bigger company goes the bigger companies um i should say is you know i'm seeing a lot more and, and having a lot more conversations around um securing profit right i mean especially with the big companies you know you're talking your high tech companies even they they do well revenue wise um, a lot of these companies that are are well known usually don't have as much of an issue bringing on revenue and clients and so forth. But what they are really wanting to do is to be resilient, um, especially during these uncertain times, and to be able to secure profit and to cut costs. Where can you know, as an organization, can we increase efficiency and cut costs? And so that's been a very high focus in the conversations that I'm having. Yeah, interesting, interesting, and and I'm guessing because of the magnitude of what you started with, with the great shuffle and the great, uh, the you know the great resignation, uh, cutting costs also leads to main maintaining and retain retaining the right employees, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it is so difficult for companies to retain their top talent, let alone um, get top talent, right? It's there, there's a lot of openings, job openings currently and over the past few months, but just not enough talent out there to to get. So you're absolutely right. So employers are looking for ways to really differentiate themselves, not only from a salary standpoint, but really from a cultural standpoint. And what people want today, especially your Gen Zs and your millennials, are high flexibility working places. I want a place where I can have a work-life balance, where I can work from home and accomplish what I need to accomplish, but also not have to deal with a commute and have to, you know, uh, live in a certain place just for my job. So yeah. people are starting to realize that that's what people really want is, is sure, salary is great, but I want an environment where I can be happy and I can balance, you know, work my work life load. Yeah, exactly. That's a great point. And and so, Nick, that kind of leads to you. When you, you talk to people that are forced with kind of, not forced, I shouldn't say that, but are given the opportunity to implement new flexible workforce management solutions, optimization platforms, uh, what what are you hearing from the, the implementers, the IT team out there that, that want to enable this flexible environment but are faced with certain challenges to, to make it all work and, and be secure and scalable and all that stuff? 
I think a lot of it has to do with what you were talking about earlier in terms of the uncertainty. I think it's amazing. And I know I was impacted by this personally during the pandemic. I moved and changed companies. And I think it's just amazing how quickly everyone adjusts to uncertainty and then recalibrates. And I think that's where we're at. I think the massive uncertainty was really unnerving and now it's almost normal and so companies are asking themselves how to solve these problems and the first thing they want to know when they talk to a company that was dealing with that prior to a pandemic just as part of their business model they're asking us for guidance immediately what are other people doing right away i mean before we even have a chance to really push anything or highlight anything the solutions it's what is the best way to do it what are other people doing that has worked because that uncertainty has come so normal, there's no waiting for it to go away. It's okay. Some people got ahead of us on this. How do we catch up? Yeah, that, that's that's a great segue into something I wanted to ask you about, uh, Nick, because, you know, ActiveOps has been around for a while. And, and even before the pandemic, we were helping companies. I, I recall two very large health insurance companies that wanted to implement a work from home strategy, which we would call now now hybrid because there's the combination. They wanted some people to work from home, some people to work from the office. So they implemented ActiveOps technology and actually to, to enable that capability where a work from home became a benefit that you earned based on your productivity or performance levels and your seniority and things like that. But then it also became a level playing field for regardless of where you worked, you were measured the same as people in the office, out of the office, et cetera. And, and, and so it wasn't a, it, it was a strategy then. Now it became, now it becomes a necessity uh, and with you coming into the company and the need for data, I mean, I'm sure that that's, that's kind of interesting. As you said, cu- customers are jumping at the chance to hear from our customers. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting angle, I think. I, I know in a similar capacity at my previous company and other companies that I'm familiar with, there was a luxury of, of an opportunity to work from home. It was almost like a benefit, a, a work benefit. You get to a point where you were trusted in that. But at, right now, it's kind of a necessity. Everyone ha- needs that flexibility. So how do you give something that was once a luxury to everybody? And I think it comes back to what you said, just the standardization. And it's funny when you think about data and you think about non-technical means of collecting data. I mean, you walk around an office and you see who is and isn't in their desk. It's a, an element of data. It's it's fairly, uh, let's call it human error prone to say, oh, I remember seeing such and such the other day. That's a kind of way of collecting data about who's there and who's doing something. But once everybody's out of focus, uh, it's you feel almost lost. You're like, okay, I, I can't trust how I was getting that information before because nobody's next to me. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And and then, uh, Jeremy, I, I think you have a couple of, of those customers that were thinking about it before the pandemic, and now they're living it. I mean, what what are you seeing with some of your customers and and, uh, and maybe just the need to expand it? Yeah, you know, I mean, remote work, it's not a new thing, right? And, and Michael, as you mentioned, you know, our company, ActiveOps, we've been around for nearly 20 years, so this is nothing new to us. Now, of course, with the pandemic, it's somewhat forced people to really rethink of the idea of remote and the hybrid model, obviously. So, uh, but what I've seen is a lot of these companies that were already going that route anyway, as you mentioned, we have a couple of big insurance companies. Now it just not only sped up that process, but it really opened up their eyes as, as Nick mentioned as to, well, we've had these people in the office already and we think that they're productive and we know they work because they're here, but do we really know how productive they are when they're working, right? And so uh, what's interesting to me is that our solution, you know, Work IQ, for instance, where it gives full visibility of what employees are doing, whether they're in the office, whether they're remote or a combination of both, it gives real data for leaders to make decisions as to you know, where work should be allocated, how much work should be done at a certain point in time, and just gives you know, that insight that allows leaders to make key decisions on you know, um, hiring, reten- you know, retention, where work should be done, and at the end of the day, being able to do more work with the people that they have today. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Nick, you mentioned um, to me uh, somewhere along the way, maybe one of our our uh, meetings uh, before, but you mentioned that that in your past experience, you noticed that when when companies start receiving data that's valuable, uh, it becomes more valuable to get more data or, or something like that. I, I may I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you said something that kind of data requires more data. Can you share a little bit about that? 
Yeah, it's like an interesting cycle. And I think even what Jeremy just talked about was something I hadn't even thought about before today's discussion, which is that when people started being home and you wanted that visibility and that information, what are they doing and how much are they producing? You almost have to then take the next step and say, we weren't even asking ourselves how well they were doing before. We just assumed work was getting done because we saw them in the office. I think it's that right there is a natural like two step of the people that I've been seeing and, and hearing from. It's people are home now. I want to know how productive they are, but they were in the office before and we weren't measuring how productive they were then. We want to go back to the office and we want to measure people fairly. Where are they actually more productive? I, I know even at my old company, there was a very clear subtone of working from home is less productive than working in the office. And well, if everybody's at home, you can't make that argument because that's all you get. You have one option. It's pro the productivity you get. So I just think once you start to see, oh, my team is productive, or like Jeremy was saying, I have resources I can use to be more productive, you want that everywhere. It's it's not enough to just look at some of the people you're going to talk to another department or to someone in a similar capacity, and you're going to want them to hold their team to the same standards so you can learn from each other. What are you doing that's working? What am I doing that's working? Why don't we all have the same way of talking that? Yeah, exactly. And, and Jeremy, I, I think you've got a big energy company and in the U.S. that uh, you're seeing that kind of play out in real time, aren't you, where, where new groups want to get that same data so they can measure the same way? Yeah, you're exactly right. It's it's really interesting, actually, because as I mentioned earlier, you know, our solution and our, our organization has really been built around operations and back office operations. I mean, our solution was really meant for that. We have experts within ActiveOps that provide trainings and certifications and so forth around that. But what I've found specifically with this large energy company is word got around and more and more departments want to utilize this solution. And when I say other departments, I mean outside of operations. This includes engineering, this includes marketing, design, this includes, you know, of course, customer service and other departments, but it's just interesting to see that, um, you know, it's more than just operation side that, side that wants to increase their productivity, but other departments really want to see, you know, true visibility of, you know, what's happening. And a lot of these companies, they're moving to what I'm hearing, they're, they're calling a remote first environment, right? They're, they're getting rid of real estate and not renewing their, their office spaces specifically to save money and again, to adapt to, to this new working model. But I'm seeing more and more companies go to this re remote first model and the, the lack of visibility that they're getting and they're noticing once they make that transition has been a, a really hot topic. Yeah, that's interesting. And, 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 Nick, with your background in BI and, and, and reporting tools overall, it's interesting because the data is not just for the managers, right? I mean, it's valuable for managers, but it's, it's also valuable for executives and employees to see their own uh, results and, and, and transitions from workplace to workplace. I mean, with your BI background, anything you want to share about just kind of how you can bifurcate the data to, to the audience? I mean, I would... I think there's a view of the data for everybody, and that's usually how reporting and different BI solutions end up being valuable or productive is when you provide the right view to the right person. I think, at least with my experience with the product so far, there are elements of that baked right in so that if you're an employee, and we can even go to something as simple as, am I working too much? It's I hear from people all the time, and when I'm working from home, I work more, not necessarily more productive work, but I'm working more because I can, because it's convenient. Cause I'm sitting in the same chair where I sit to do other things. And I think there's a, just an element of reflection there to say, do I do I need to be on for 10 hours every day? Am I getting my work done and then staying in the chair because? And those are the types of things that lead to burnout and other elements. So I think as an individual, be having that information could get you out of potential of burnout situations. And I think as an executive, you want to hold everyone to the same standards. So when you have multiple departments you can oversee and you know that they're looking for the same measurements, just being able to know that everybody is kind of working in the same way. It's consistent. It's a it's a reliable business model. They, they say good data in, good data out. If you're not collecting good information, uh, you're not going to make good decisions. It's just going to be a, a guess. You might make a good guess. You might make a good gut decision, but there's, there's not going to be much to back it. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, you see Jamie Dimon from J.P. Morgan Chase come out and say that he's not going to pay for remote workers. And but then today you see Starbucks saying that they're not going to test or mandate vaccinations. 
it, so it's, it, I mean, the just uncertainty continues. So I, I really appreciate the both of you perspective. I know I put you on the spot being being relatively new employees. Um, but I really, I think the views are important because it, it, you, you, you get views outside and inside the company of what we think is going to work and what not going to work. And, and companies are changing every day. The climate's changing every day. I mean, anything else you want to add, Jeremy, from, uh, from, from wrapping up this conversation? I think it's, it's been an interesting topic and, and good views. Anything else? Yeah, no, other than just, you know, I really appreciate the time. Um, and I look forward to kind of seeing what, more happens here in 2022. I'm really excited. And uh, I know all of us here at ActiveOps are excited to uh, have a great year. And hopefully things can change rapidly as, as it comes to some of these different variants and so forth. So we can just get back to business as usual. But um, yeah, no, other than that, I appreciate your time. And yeah. Nick, I appreciate you being here as well. Thank you. And, and Nick, Thanks, anything you want to add? I mean, I, I think what you said was interesting because if 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 they don't get started collecting the data, they're going to make decisions in the in the in 2022 that that are based on a hunch or, or a feeling as opposed to kind of actual data. So I, I, I kind of was listening to your answer and think it's resounding to say you probably ought to get started collecting this data soon, whether it's mandate data or availability data or eligibility data or just well-being data. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna reiterate the same thing. That if I can make even just a pitch to people listening to this, not to be salesy, just to be informational. The data you have from before, it's it's not necessarily viable. It's not necessarily accurate. You probably weren't working in the same way, so your guesses are going to be based on something that that isn't related to this ever changing landscape. I, I read LinkedIn articles almost every day, the news articles, and it's tough following companies that are following in 2021 and, and got to the end of their fiscal years and saw that business models that were set prior, they're not working and now they're downsizing and now they're changing their business plans and they're doing yeah. these types of things because they were making decisions with the wrong data. They weren't looking at the real landscape. They're looking at an ideal. It's just different. So yeah, the sooner you're collecting the right information, the sooner your decisions are going to be more accurate. They're going to be better for your people. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you both for being here and taking a little time out of your day uh, to, to talk with our customers and our, our, our viewers of this. And uh, for those of you watching, we appreciate you being here every time and we uh, are excited. You can always go to AOTV on YouTube and find all of the AO on Air podcasts. You can also go to your favorite podcast channels and find them there. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about ActiveOps, you can go to ActiveOps.com. We have a resource hub that has a just a wealth of information from videos to white papers to data sheets, et cetera. Uh, you can reach out to us directly, filling out a form and talk to Jeremy and Nick directly. So feel free to do that. You could also probably find them on LinkedIn. Uh, but we always uh, always welcome to the conversation. Uh, stay with us next time. We'll, we're going to interview a gentleman named Ray Bow from Accentuate, and we'll talk about the business operations climate in Ireland. So do tune in for the next version of AO on Air. Thank you. For, in the meantime, have a great day, and we'll see you soon. At ActiveOps, we call it Management Process Automation, or MPA. MPA helps managers make better decisions by providing a consistent, easy-to-understand view of capacity and productivity. MPA does the hard work of consolidating information, forecasting and planning, and even gives you visibility of skills and capabilities across your enterprise. Your managers can make decisions based on a complete picture of their operations and then get back to leading. As work progresses, MPA helps managers spot problems early and deal with them proactively, celebrate successes properly, and match resource to workload in real time. By making managers more effective, MPA reduces operational costs. Best of all, the right MPA tools make it possible to deliver all these benefits across global enterprises with thousands of employees. Solutions like Workwear Plus from ActiveOps, Workwear Plus builds on our 20 years of experience supporting service operations to give you a 360-degree view of your operations, helping you turn operations management from a guessing game into a game-changing source of efficiency and value. Employees are empowered to manage their days and weeks, feeling accomplished, confident and able to balance work and personal life. Wherever your organisation or customers live and work, ActiveOps is ready to help you deliver world-class service and employee engagement to help your company thrive. ActiveOps. See further. Know more. Move faster.